Hey there, everybody. In this video, I'm going over a pretty neat way to create intricate key combos for abilities and other actions. Input combos, key combos are great for fighting games. They're great for RPG games. There's a lot of uses for this type of system. And in the past, it's been cumbersome, to say the least, to get these uh, set up, at least in my opinion. So let's just get right into it and I'll show you how it's done. For anybody new to the enhanced input system, I'm going to start with a completely blank project. Here in my completely empty level, I am going to create a few input actions. If your combos rely on directional keys or directional movement, you may want to break them up into each direction having its own input action. It would make your life a lot easier. After some input actions, we need a input mapping context. And then this is where we add those input actions. Then we go into the details and assign keys and modifiers. So all this is fairly straightforward. Here I'm assigning some keys for these actions. I like to set my uh, input mapping context in the player controller instead of the character. So I'm going to create a controller. On begin play, I'll add the mapping context to the controller. Uh, to do this, make sure to uncheck context sensitive or you will not find the add mapping context node. So in this node, uh, we just assign the mapping context we had created. Then I create a custom game mode. Change the player controller to be my custom one. Then in project settings, in maps and modes, change the game mode to my custom game mode. Now everything should be set up. Now, perhaps I should have done this first, but I will import the third person character so that I can have a, um, a mesh as an example to run around with. In my custom game mode, I changed the default pawn class to this third person character. Right now, the third person character is using all the um, inputs that come with it. I'm just going to clean all this out and add the things I set up. I'm deleting the mapping context that comes with the third person character, um, the maps, the game mode, just deleting everything that I had already set up on my own. I'm keeping the character, the mesh, the animations. Now in the character blueprint, I am adding the input actions that I had set up here in my input actions in the left, right, and forward, backward. We want axis 1D. In my game, uh, the player can double click left, right, and we'll do a roll. And if they double click forward, backward, they do a flip. Here I'm adding the jump action I had created as to replace the one that came with the third person character. Keeping most of the other logic in place. I didn't set up any camera actions, so I'll just delete all of the camera stuff right now. We don't, you can leave it, of course. And then I am setting my input mapping in the player controller, so I do not need uh, this here in my character. So at this point, I simply have forward, backward, and jump movements set up using all of the actions I had created on my own. With all of that set up, I, we can hit play, and the character is now using what I had set up and can run and jump. There is no camera control because I deleted that functionality. Now I'm just uh, cleaning up the project a little bit, getting rid of all the extra stuff that came over with the third person character. And I'll just leave the um, characters folders that has all the animations, rigs, meshes, etc. 
Now at this point, I'll create a separate folder for my combos, the actions that will be my combo actions. Creating a new input action will create a double jump combo. This is one of the simple ones. It's simply a double click. The value will be a Boolean. In the trigger box, we make it combo. And in the combo array, we want to select jump. What this is doing is it's going to look for the jump action. And then when that completes, it's going to, we're going to set it to look for it again, depending on how much leeway you give the player to perform this action. You might, you may want to reduce the, the timings. For uh, action-based games, you would want the timings to be quicker. For more relaxing um, RPGs or something, you may give them a little more time to press the keys. Add the double jump action to the mapping context that we've created. Really nothing needs to be edited once you add it there. All of the combo was set up in the action blueprint. Now add the double jump event to the character, and I'll just do a print string to let me know that it's working. Print string will need to be replaced by the actual logic that makes the character double jump. Here I'm just pressing jump twice to see that it's firing the string. So that's a simple combo. The next one will, you know, we can do the same thing with double click, a very common effect. and. Uh, we take our click action and just replace jump with click. And then we have a simple double click that we could use in menus or to interact with things in your game. It's especially handy for top-down games, strategy games. I have click and double click working. A single click only fires the click and double click gives me that double click event. Very simple, super easy. Now for the last combo, a little more complex, but still very easy, very straightforward. So for this combo, I want each direction to be part of the combo. So now I'm adding, um, Additional actions for up, down, left, right. So here I'm adding each direction to the mapping context. And I'll add the attack combo as well while I'm here, but I still need to set it up. So now in the attack combo, we will have each direction added as part of the combo. And you can see there's a lot of options here to set this up. To top it off, um, I'm going to create a cancel action. I'll add that to my mapping context as well. We'll make it the right mouse button. And then I can add the cancel action into the um, cancel actions array within the attack combo action here. So now when I do right mouse click, it'll cancel out of the combo. I need to make sure to add the keys for each of these directions. So I'm in the mapping context, just assigning the keys for everything. With all that set up, I come into the character blueprint for testing. I'll just uh, create the events with some print strings for all of the actions I have created. Now, upon testing, you can see the combo is working. As I do the five key combo, this is such a great feature. This saves so much time and uh, it just streamlines the process to have complex input sequences for your game.
if you want the player to do a pattern, uh, unlock a password with a, a sequence of keys, it can easily be set up here with these input actions. It's all just built right in. Certainly worth looking into for most games. So yeah, I thought this was a pretty neat feature and I just wanted to make a video on it. If this helps anyone, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.